More than 1,000 dock workers at the Port of Montreal began a strike on Monday, a move that the Port Authority said would mean the total shutdown of all port operations. The move was aiming to put pressure on the Maritime Employers Association to reach a contract with dock workers because they haven't had one since December 2018. Federal Labor Minister Philomena Tassi has tabled controversial back-to-work legislation aimed at getting the 1,150 dock workers back on the job. Well, to talk more on the significant impact the strike has on not only the economy, but trade and international commitments, we are joined by Brendan Caldwell, Director of Caldwell Securities Limited. Welcome back to Forum Daily, Brendan. Morning, Emma. Now, uh, this isn't the first time that a strike was held at the Port of Montreal. There was a similar strike action back in the summer of 2020. So what kind of economic and logistical impact did the 2020 strike have on Canada's economy? Well, it, it wasn't great. Uh, now, when you say it's not the first time it's happened, it's not the first time it's happened during COVID. So we are all in this together, yet the federal government that owns the Port of Montreal and the dock workers can't seem to get it together in a critical uh, lynch point um, for our economy. So we're all in this together, except we're not. So the impact on the economy was tremendous. It's hundreds of millions of dollars of goods is left on the docks. Um, I was talking last night to the owner of a medical and uh, healthcare supply company who's had hand sanitizers and others just uh, sitting by the docks with because of a, a global shutdown in trade. Or It's already been challenging enough to get goods from other parts of the world because of issues the other parts of the world are having, both nationalistic and logistic. So and for Canada to be competitive, we have to literally be all in this together, as opposed to fighting amongst ourselves. Because if we do not hang together, to borrow from Benjamin Franklin, if we do not hang together, we shall all surely hang separately. Now, this is Canada's second largest port we're talking about. So how would this impact already stressed supply chains and deliveries for companies across Canada? It's not great, Nima. Uh, again, getting goods out of parts of the world, particularly China, has been challenging. Uh, but all countries have had uh, their supply chains disrupted. And what we've really learned through this pandemic is that we all depended on each other. For this world to function, if you don't like the buzzword globalization, fine, we'll change it. But for us to exist as a species on this planet, we have to work together. And I understand that countries that are doing less well than Canada are having a hard time making that working well happen. But here in Canada, it's not, it's, it's not been great, but it's not been as bad as the rest of the world. And we need to be able to find ways to, to make our, our ports, our infrastructure work so that at least internally we can work together and externally we put our best foot and face forward for uh, working with and indeed competing with the rest of the world. Now, considering the future impacts of this, we saw certain shipping lines diverting their routes from the Port of Montreal to competing ports uh, due to the uncertainty of the summer 2020 strike. Uh, what does a second major strike in less than a year mean for the future success of the port itself, Brendan? Well, it's, it's not good for Canada as a whole. It's not good for Quebec specifically. Uh, I imagine that more business is going west to Vancouver, even to Toronto, perhaps to Halifax. So for Quebec, which has been in recovery mode for a long time. And keep in mind, COVID's hit Quebec harder than any other province in this nation. To, to get this, you know, when I, when I said about Canada, I don't want to tell Quebec how to do its business, but with, within its own province, it's got to work together to, to be able to compete. Otherwise, yeah, CN and CP and the different rail lines will need to, to ship to other ports, and that doesn't help Quebec. And they need it more than any other province in this country right now. Right, Brendan. Now, we've got a little over a minute left, uh, but I really want to bring this back home to our Canadian viewers now. How would a strike like this impact Canadian families in particular? Well, I think emotionally to start with, uh, many, many people have lost their jobs, lost their businesses. Uh, and when if the federal government and a federal union, which is what the, the dock workers are, uh, can't get it together, and it's not as though the dock workers haven't been paid, it's just they haven't had a contract since 2018. So if they can't get it together and work together, then what does that mean emotionally, let alone financially and in terms of getting hand sanitizers or anything else they need for Canadian families that are really are suffering, that haven't been paid, that have lost their businesses or lost their jobs? 
it is a very stressful time, and I cannot say this enough. We as a country, Quebec as a province, all of the provinces together have to work together because it's challenging for us. It's even more challenging for the rest of the world. And if we're going to face the rest of the world and indeed compete with the rest of the world, we have to work together, and that is a non-negotiable. All right, Brendan, always great having you on Forum Daily. Thank you again for your time today.